Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Supply. Let's make a side sewn scabbard. Now we've got a great video on a traditional scabbard. We're going to sew that on a rear ridge and wet form it. Press it. Where's the problem? Because we have to press that, very few options to decorate. We can't tool. We can't stamp. We can't even add spots. Okay, side sewn, whole different situation because now sky is the limit. We've got one big empty canvas and we can do so much with it. Well, we're leather crafters. We want to go all in, right? Okay, so anything I use in this video, weaverleathersupply.com or check below. We've got links there. Going to take you straight to the website. Also, if you want to know when our videos release, just click your notifications. You'll know exactly when these come out. So let's jump over to our pattern table, get started. This is a relatively simple pattern and it's super easy to get a very accurate fit. Now we've got a digital pick. We're going to come back to this, but let's start here because the first thing we need, a good tracing of our blade. Easiest way to do this, let's lay our sword right on the edge of our table. There we go. Now we get an accurate tracing. Second step, let's add in a center line on that because we're going to work out from that. Now our guard. This can be the only difficult part. Well, if we've got a flat guard, no issue. That's easy. But a number of us, we may have some kind of an intricate decoration here. We're just going to have to work it. Now, some swords, there's a little bit of room between the guard and the blade. So we can fit a piece of poster board or paper up under that. Not the case here. So what I'm going to do, let's take a French curve. And I'm just going to see if I can find right there. That's exactly the curve. So I'm going to piece, take a piece of tape. Let's put that right on the blade edge and a second piece of tape right on the tip. Well, there's our curve. So when I start to trace this out, that's exactly what I need for both our throat and our main body. So again, on, the, on our guard, we might have to work with that one just a little bit. A perfect fit, we don't absolutely need that. In fact, Right here, I don't think I have an absolutely perfect fit here. Now, nah, we're just a little bit off, but you know what? That still looks good. So don't feel like that's got to be absolutely perfect. It doesn't. Okay, let's jump over to our digital pick. So right here, we've got our main body, our face, and our backing. We've got to cut two. What I'd like to do is flop that. Cut one, flop the pattern, cut the second to get those to meet as well as possible. Our welt. We're going to go 3 eighths of an inch on either side. Two ways we can do that, and we're going to talk about that. But down here on our throat and our tip, all I'm going to do here is trace in from my main body pattern a piece about 4 inches long. On these, they're actually 3 inches from the top to the point. Trace that in. There we go. Easy enough on that end. For our tip, exactly the same thing. Make these as long or as short as you want. In fact, if you want to put one in the center, you can absolutely do that. Again, a big empty canvas. All right, so we basically have everything we need. Let's jump over to our pattern table, cut some leather. One of the best things about a side sewn scabbard, we can use any weight leather we've got in our shop from a three to four ounce up to a nine to 10 ounce. We're gonna use two different weights. We don't have to. We can use the same weight for everything. But for our scabbard, we're going to use a 7 to 8 ounce natural veg. This is our Weaver Select. If I'm going to stamp or tool, this is the leather I'm going to go with. For our throat and our tip, let's back down to say maybe a 4 to 5, 5 to 6 ounce. Again, we can cut everything out of the same weight. Now, one good point. We're going to cut one up and one down because, say on this side, we've got just a little bit of a bow. Well, if we cut one up, one down, when this goes together, we'll never see that. If they're opposite, we're going to have a bow on the top here and a bow on the bottom. It's going to stick out like a sore thumb. So let's do one up and one down. I've got a cut edge here from a previous project, but also too, I'm going to double check. I've got no overcut from that previous project. We've got to watch for that. So let's trace this in. Good, we're traced in. Now, when we cut this, if you're new to leather craft, the two biggest points I can give you, first off, non-slip tape, and we sell this. I put this on the back of every straight edge I have, and in fact, some of these, even on the face. The point is, it's like right here, with this edge, with this square, if I try to cut this, 
that's going to fade. It's going to happen every time, simply because our leather can be a little bit slick. But if we put the non-slip tape on the back and right to the edge, then when we hold this down, we've got no issues with that moving around. Second big point, sharp or new blade every time. There we go, we've got both pieces cut. Now let's take one of these, the best of the two. Well, actually it's Weaver Select, they both look great. So let's take one of these over to our pattern table. We're gonna stamp this, so let's case our leather. You don't have to case your leather by any means. It's a little bit of a drawn out process. You can simply wet the leather, give it 15 or 20 minutes and stamp. But we've got a video on this and it is a world of difference. So let's start right here. I'm gonna run my scabbard through our water and I'm gonna do this very slowly. I want this to get a good water content. Nice. Now I can feel that it's got a good water content, but it doesn't feel oversaturated. So let's leave that right there. Let that excess water evaporate. Give this about 30, 45 minutes. We're going to jump back over to our main table, work on our welt. Let's back up here because I don't feel like I explained this very well. For our new folks, when we get our tracing on our pattern paper, what we're going to do is come out three eighths of an inch from our sword all the way around. That's going to be our welt. Our sword will actually sit inside that, inside the scabbard. Now there's a couple of ways we can do this. Well, first off with our wooden strap cutter, we can simply cut out a 3 8 inch piece of strapping and glue this in. Down here on the, on the tip, that's not really a hard curve. We can get that to glue in pretty nicely. And in fact, that's the way this scabbard's done. But what I would prefer to do is let's cut one more body piece out and we're gonna cut out the inside. Now immediately, looks like we're gonna be wasting leather. Actually, we're not. Well, first off, that inside piece, it's gonna be a big help to us when we're sewing. I'll explain that in a little bit. But also, this inside piece, we can strap that down. We can actually use that to make a belt loop for the sword. So let's draw in one more main body piece and we'll cut this out. Do our best to split our ink line and it looks like we can. Okay, let's reset here because we're going to mark for our welt. Good, give us a little extra working room. So now let's take our sword, let's lay this on our welt piece. There we go, good. Now let's just trace a line in here. We're never going to see anything on our welt except the outside edge. So let's trace in our sword. Easy enough there. So now we need to cut this inside piece out. What I would suggest, just to give ourselves a little extra room for error, I want to cut exactly on that line or maybe just a little bit outside of it, giving the sword a little more room on the inside. I want a good fit, but at the same time, I don't want that to be too tight. There we go. Best part about this, we're actually going to have a seamless welt. And again, ink on this, no problem. We'll never see that. So let's set this piece aside. Let's reset, cut our throat and our tip. Well, I've about had it with the pen. Let's go with a scribe from here on out. Now, a couple of points on our throat and tip. Well, first off, we're going to die, then assemble. We could go with just about any leather on this. We could go with a chrome, a print. We could get creative with that. But secondly, we're not going to decorate our throat and tip, mainly up here because a frog's going to cover that. But to me, I like this design. It's kind of a less is more. Makes this stand out a little bit more. So on this, we're going to go with about a, this is about a five to six ounce. Again, our Weaver Select, we can go with a four to five or even a three to four. Actually, a little bit thinner is a little bit better for our throat and tip. So let's scribe and cut these out. Those are cut, good. Now, on our throat and tip, first step, let's go with our groover, set it one eighth of an inch, and I'm gonna groove all the way around on both pieces.
Well, that looks good. Now, our edger. We're going to edge all sides on both pieces. I'm going to use a number one master tool edger. Good. We've got a good groove and edge on both of those. So now let's move some of this back. Jump over to our back. Now we're not going to groove this because typically a chisel, it's going to be hard to get a chisel to go through this and hit our groove line on the back. So what we would have is groove line, stitch line. To me that looks terrible, but if we just have a good groove or a good stitch line, that's all we need. Where I'm going with that is this. Let's groove and edge our throat. Good. Now let's edge all the way around. There we go. Good. So let's step back over to our pattern table and check on our cased leather. We've given this about 45 minutes and I can feel it. It's starting to dry out just right. Now I'm going to put this between two pieces of either our pattern sheeting or our tracing film works just as well. I just don't want to leave this on some wood, something that would absorb the water back out of the leather. So let's lay this in. Good. Now I like to use just a piece of suede. It's got a little weight to it, so it's going to pin that down. But also if we're worried about light fading, that's not going to be an issue. So now let's leave this covered. I would say no less than about six hours, but we could go out as much as four or five days. So let's just let this case overnight. It's hard to get the entire scabbard into this shot, but we've given this plenty of time overnight to dry. This is absolutely perfect. I can feel it. It's not dry. I can certainly feel some moisture in it, but by no means does it feel absolutely soaking wet. Now, we're going to give this about half an hour. Let it air dry. We want this to start to return to its natural color. While this dries, I'm going to jump over, get a set, and ready to go with our stamps. This looks good. Now, it could go maybe five, ten more minutes, but I like how it feels right now. Let's jump over to our main table, drop in our guideline. I'm having a hard time keeping this entire scabbard in every shot. So let's start right here. We're going to mark our guideline, but let's start. Let's take our throat, line that up, and I'm just going to scribe in a line here, and I'm going to do the same thing for the tip. There we go. That's easy enough. Now, we're going to come in one eighth of an inch for our stitch line. So let's come in one quarter of an inch for our guide. That's going to look good. Drop that stitch line right in the middle of that. But we've got a small problem here. So we set our wing divider at one quarter of an inch. Well, if we're on even ground, a quarter is a quarter. But because our right side is dropping down a little bit, it's going to draw the left in. So I'd say let's set this at five sixteenths, or right about eight millimeter. Now, over here, we've got our throat and our tip marked. We're going to start in the middle and work out. So what I'd like to do is start from about one half of an inch in here and one half of an inch in here. We've got that. Now, last step here. Let's work this to where we start at a center point with our stamps and work our way out. That'll make sure that we're even on both ends. So let's find a center point, roughly I would say just from the bottom of our throat to the top of our tip, that's 25 and a half inches, so 12 and three quarters, I'm just going to make one small mark on one side. We know where our center line is. So let's jump over to our punch table. Let's add in a stamp design. My favorite part of the project, we get to decorate this. Now, I'm not going to go on a roll here, but just a few ideas for your scabbard tool in some Celtic knot work. And we don't have to do a full knot work design all the way down. We could just do small pieces. That would be beautiful. But also a floral, maybe some vine work. We could simply tool in diamonds all the way down, and that would be beautiful. So again, so many ways we can go. We're going to go with a simple border stamp design. Now, border stamp looks great, but I want a stamp that's going to work itself more into the body of the scabbard. The only problem there, again, descending. 
we don't all have stamps in 10 smaller sizes. So what we're going to do, let's start right here. One of my favorite tools, it's got a Celtic knot feel to it. We've got our center line. So let's drop our stamp right on that mark. Look at that. The cased leather just takes that stamp. In fact, I'm a little bit light on this side. We can easily fix that. I can feel that stamp sit right back down in there. Now I'm just going to work left a little bit. Clean and consistent. That's what we want. Next stamp. Let's come directly across. Let's drop this in on our line. And let's see if we can get those two to point right at each other. We did. That looks good. Okay, we're going to work our way out from here. So now down to a smaller border stamp. I'm going to do this two on each side of both sides. That looks so good. Notice the depth of the stamp. We can see every detail. And notice I don't really have to hit the stamp that hard. That's because we've cased our leather. Next up, let's come back to our larger and I'm going to drop one on either end. Now, when I flip this around and I work my way out, what I'd like to try to do is when I lay this stamp in, I want to see if I can get this stamp, the point of this stamp, to point right at the point of that. Yeah, there we go. Little bit off, but not enough to see. Now we're getting down to our throat and our tip. Here's our scribed line. So what I think we'll do, let's go and drop in one of the larger stamp and one of the smaller. That's actually going to come out almost perfect. And on the other end, because we started on a center line, that is going to come out just the same. Very nice design. Well, we got a little bit of a problem. We've got a little bit extra guideline down here. So what I'd like to do, let's go ahead and drop in one more of the smaller border stamp right here. Just a little bit off, but all told, that looks great. Okay, now we need to give this some more dry time. So again, we're going to give this overnight needs to be totally dry before our next step. One more step and we get to dye this beautiful scabbard. I can't wait to see this come out. Now I know this can be confusing to the new folks. Why do we only groove and bevel in certain places? I'll explain it. It'll make perfect sense. So right here, we've got our throat and our tip. This is our top ply. So I want to bevel and groove all the way around. Second ply, we don't have to do that behind our throat. So right here, I'm just going to bevel and groove between throat and tip. On our back, I'm just going to edge right here. So that, like right here, we've got four plies. I want a rounded edge, flat, flat, rounded edge. That's all we're doing. So on our main body here, all I'm going to do is groove and edge between our throat and our tip. Or our tip and our throat. Yeah, there we go. And down to our tip. Well, there we go. That looks good. Okay, let's reset, add some dye. We're going to go black on this one. We're going to add in an antique to that. We're going to mix it up a little bit. But this is the Fibings Pro Dye Black. It's the only dye I use. Now on this, I love this. To me, that's a very period look. This is a light brown, the Pro Dye Light Brown, medium brown antique, and then on the throat and tip, I've done the Pro Dye in a walnut. 
just to change it up. So if you want to go this route, easy to do. But let's go black. So right here, let's start with our throat and our tip. And again with black, this cures all ills, easy to do. If we've got a little ink on this, not an issue. Well, that's easy enough. Okay, the piece we cut out from our welt, we don't need to worry about that. So let's give this about an hour, maybe an hour and a half dry time. Then we're going to come back in with an antique. This is absolutely the last stop in my shop for a pair of gloves and a rag. This can be a mess, but it is so worth it. What we're going to do, we're going to match a previous project I've done, black and turquoise. So I'm using there we go, the antique neutral, and I'm going to mix that with our Angelus turquoise paint. Unlimited possibilities with antique colors here. Now, once we sew this together, we'll never see the inside of the scabbard. Where I'm going with that is this. Let's just add a little tape to the throat so that the antique doesn't wrap around. To me, that looks very unprofessional. Now, right here on our antique, I've gone about 50-50 about 50% antique and about 50% neutral. That's going to be a little bit heavy, but in this situation, I want it a little bit heavy. I want a little more color. So let's take a rag, just a basic cotton rag. First thing we're going to do is let's cover our top grain. Then we'll come back in with a dauber and fill in. Now we get that on our top grain, and what I want to do is come back in with a very thin rag. A thicker rag is going to start to wipe that out from inside the stamps. So let's use a cotton rag and then a very thin rag. Now we don't necessarily need to add the antique up under the throat and tip, but we certainly want to get at least a little bit under that. Okay, so now our scabbard has a bit of an antique patina to it. Now let's come in with our dauber. What I'm going to do now is let's start filling in the stamped areas. I'm going to fill some in. Get that down inside there and in our groove line. Now let's come back with our thin rag, wipe away from the direction we're coming. That looks so good. I can't believe that. I'm so happy with the way this is turning out. Now our edges. This is kind of iffy. We can certainly do our edges, and we will. But when we sew this together, if we need to sand a little bit, that can be an issue. But we can always come back in and add a little antique. So let's just hit our edges with a little antique. Good. Now let's come back and wipe that off. Well, that looks good. Now, let's don't forget this because I always do. Let's make sure we hit our throat. Clean that off. Good. Now, let's make one more pass just for cleanup. That looks good. Very nice. Let's set that aside. Now, on our throat and tip, we're going to do exactly the same thing. Our face and then all sides. One of the many things I love about an antique is notice our groove line. It really picks up that antique. Now we're going to over sew this, but right here when we don't have a stitch line, that really looks good. All right, so last step, let's jump over to our backing. We're going to do exactly the same thing. And our back piece is done. Now, one big point, if we're trying to get this consistent, it's not going to be consistent. It's an antique. It's supposed to look used and loved. So now, on our welt, we could absolutely put our antiquing along the outside edge. In this situation, 
I'm not going to worry about that. Good. So let's give our antique maybe half hour, 45 minutes, good dry time. Then we'll come back in at our top coat. Our antique has had time to dry, so let's come back in. We're going to add a top coat. Now a top coat, if you're new to leather, this is going to protect us from the leather and the leather from us, but it's going to give us a low gloss and it's going to enrich in our dye color. It's going to make this scabbard pop. We're going to go with a leather balm, my all-time favorite. Don't need ventilation on this. Actually, it smells kind of nice, but what we're going to do to apply, let's go with something like a fleece, simply because this is going to hold a lot of the leather balm. We can work our way almost all the way across even a larger project. Secondly, we're going to give that about 15, maybe 20 seconds to dry. Then we're going to come back with a cotton rag. Now I say cotton. This can be a 50-50 mix. Typically for me, these are old t-shirts. Those make great rags. So let's start right here. Let's get a little leather balm in our rag. Now we want to apply this somewhat sparingly. And let's just easily drop this on. The one thing we don't want is streaking and bubbles. Good. There we go. Okay. Let's give that just about 15, maybe 20 seconds. Let that wick in and dry. Just a little bit more dry time to our project. Now let's take our cloth and I'm going to buff this. Now from time to time, it can go very flat on us. Let's don't panic. I always do, but let's don't panic because as we buff, that's going to buff right out. And let's come back down. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. That looks good. So now I'm going to do the same thing to our back and our throat and our tip. And there we go. Throat and tip. Again, we've got a nice gloss on those. So now let's step over to our pattern table, drop in our spots. We set spots in just about every project, every video. I love these. They're inexpensive, they're easy to add, and they look so good. They can really dress up a project. Now, for the folks that are new, we don't need equipment to set these. And we'll look at that, five easy steps. But first off, we need to determine where we're going to put in our spots. So we're going to follow the same design as right here. We're going to drop in one spot right in the middle of our design. You can add as many or as few spots as you want. I almost want to add one into each of the inside curves there. I just feel like that's going to be too many spots. To me, less is more. So let's start right here. With a square, what I'm going to do, we've got a line where our two inside stamps butt together. So let's drop in our square. We're at two and a quarter inches wide here. So I'm going to make a mark at one and one eighth of an inch. Good. Let's do the same thing all the way down. Okay, we've got those set. Now, our first step, let's take a spot and I'm going to mark. I'm going to straddle that hole and press the spot in. Now, I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but I can see where my tine holes are going to be. So let's take an art knife. Now, this has got the longer blade on it, so we'll have to order these separately. But let's take our knife and right on that mark, I'm going to push through into my cardboard palette. We've got this here simply so we don't ding the end of our blade. So let's reverse that because basically we're simply trying to mimic the shape of the tine. Good. Okay, let's press our spot through. And there we are. Easy enough. Okay, let's do this on the back. Let's take our art knife and we're going to bend these inward. Good. Now we'll come back. We've got one more step there, but what I'm going to do is the same all the way down. And our last spot. Good. Those are set well. Now I'm going to put this on my cords. I'm going to tap these down with my mallet but I don't want to hit them hard enough to ding them. And we don't have to. About that's all we need. But now, when I feel that, I can't really feel the tines. I can feel a little bit of an impression, but the tines are sunk in. And one more. I am so happy with that. 
That looks good. Now we're going to do one more quick reset because we're going to add a Sam Brown. This is a nice touch to a scabbard. We've got a little glue. Now a Sam Brown. This is typically called a button stud. We're going to drop that right in the middle. So no matter what frog we put this in, it's going to stay in that frog. So let's start right here. Let's find our center line. Point to point. Good. Two and a half inches. Let's come down just about one inch. I don't really want to center that. Let's drop in a hole there with our revolving punch. There we go. That should fit. That's going to work for us. Okay, so we've got some of our leather craft cement. This is simply a screw post. It's going to screw in. So let's put a little bit of our cement on the post. Now, this is going to pin between our main body and our throat. So the metal here will never touch our sword. So let's just screw that down. Now, that's got a slot on the back for a screwdriver. But in all honesty, I don't ever seem to need one. That tightens down nicely. Okay, let's step over to our main table. Let's glue this together. Get ready to sew. It is time to see this come together. Can't wait. So let's flip this over. Let's start with our face. Let's take our tape off. Good. Now with our glue, we can certainly go with our white glue. Great glue for leather. But we're going to have a little handling in this. Now technically, the glue is just there long enough for us to get a stitch in. But again, we're going to have a little handling on this before we do that. So let's go with our S18, our contact cement. Now on our face, what I want to do is just add glue along this edge, maybe about a quarter of an inch in. The one thing I don't want is that glue wrapping around my edge. So let's lay this on the edge of our table. And just from the top, let's just hit brushing off again so we don't come back in and get glue on our edge. We can sand that off but we're starting to get a real can of worms there. So let's just work about a quarter of an inch of glue down. Okay, we've got glue on the face, so let's scoot that over. Now, on our welt, let's put our glue on our flesh side. Now, there's a reason for this, and we'll come back to that. And we've got glue on our welt. Let's make sure we get right to the very end. Okay, let's give that just about five minutes. Let that glue wick in and set. Let's glue our welt down. So I'm going to work this around, and I'm going to do my best to get that to lay right up next to that edge for me. Well, that looks good. We've got a nice edge, both sides, very nice. Now, let's do this. Let's take our rougher, and I'm going to rough the top grain on my welt. Well, that looks good. I don't want to rough it so much that it gets fuzzy, but I do want to at least break that top grain so our glue is going to stick. So on our welt, let's add glue all the way around. Good, we've got glue on our well. Okay, on our back piece, let's take our tape off. And again, we're just going to hit a quarter of an inch all the way around. We've got our contact cement on. Again, let's give that about five minutes. Let that glue wick in. We've got good dry time again. A lot of dry time involved in this project. Before we glue this together, though, let's take this piece and lay it in. Let's give it enough room on this end to where we have room to pull this out. But let's get it down to right there, and this is going to help us in two ways. We'll see that shortly. But let's lay in our back. Good, our edges line up very nicely. This looks good. Now we're going to add our throat and our tip. So on our main body, for the throat and the tip, we've got our scribed line. I'm going to use the rougher, and I'm going to rough this. I don't want to rough it so hard that it gets fuzzy, but I do want to at least break through that top grain so it'll take our glue.
We've got that, so now let's add glue to our throat and our tip. And our last little bit of dry time. Now, one of the ways this is gonna help us is when we press this down, we're not pushing down into the scabbard. That's gonna remain level for us. But the real reason we're doing that is for our sewing, and we're gonna talk about that. So let's lay our throat and our tip in. Well, everything is fitting together so nicely. Let's step over to our pattern table. As usual, I picked the darkest possible color for our project so we do not see what's going on. We're gonna use a drill press to punch our holes. Now, we could use a chisel. Here's the problem. Three ply, four ply. That chisel barely makes it through that leather, but that brings up all kinds of issues. So with a drill press or a hand drill or a craft drill, absolutely. But the thing about a drill press, that bit goes straight through each and every time. One of the issues with a chisel, if we lean in just a little bit, we run the risk of coming right out of our edge. But with a drill or a drill press, not the problem. Now, with that though, we need to mark our leather. So right here, I've got a groove line in. We could always take a square and we could mark every quarter of an inch. That's about four stitches, or that is four stitches per inch. But what we're gonna do, let's use a stitch spacer. We've got two here. We've got a five and we've got a six five stitches per inch, six per inch. So I've got my groove line in. Let's drop the spur right in that. How easy is that? We've got a perfectly spaced stitch line. And in fact, that looks like a stitch line. So if we ever wanna have a fake stitch line for any reason, we can simply use a spacer. So over on our scabbard, let's start right here. I'm gonna take an awl and I'm gonna make a mark literally right in the point. I want my stitch line starting right there. So let's make a mark there. Good, now we're gonna go five stitches per inch. So let's put one of the spurs right in that all hole. There we go. And now let's work our way around the groove line all the way to the throat. And we've got that last mark that came out almost perfect. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Almost perfect, good. Okay, let's step over to our drill press, drop in our holes. Here's the biggest reason we're using our inset. So whether we're gonna drill or we're gonna chisel, our tendency is to press down on the scabbard. We're just holding it in place. But what happens? Because we've got two welts in here, that bows down, it actually brings our edges in a little bit. So our hole would actually be at an angle. But if we leave that in there, it's no issue. Now our setup right here. The drill bed about a sixteenth of an inch, 1.6 millimeters, give or take, somewhere in that neighborhood. Now right here I've got a thin metal sheet and I've got this clamp to my drill press and I've put a hole in it with this drill bit. So as we drill through the scabbard, that's gonna shear the leather on the backside or shear the hole. It's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna look pretty good. Now our distance, we can hit that groove line spot on, but what I would like to do, I wanna come just a hair this way giving ourselves just a little room for error. And when we sew, let's just go through these holes very slowly. That's gonna give us a good sheared hole. And right in the tip. Good, let's flip it around, go all the way down the other side. And our last hole, wow, is that tedious, but gonna be worth every minute. Let's go sew this and we are done. We're gonna break up our sewing and here's why. We've got 30 inches on both sides. That's 60 inches total length we're gonna have to sew. We're gonna go five times that length with our thread. Right there, that's almost four times our stitch, stitch length just going across. So that's 25 feet of thread. Let's don't do that to ourselves. 
Let's start in the middle and work out on both sides. Make it so much easier. Now, one good point, we can't see this, but on the back of our pony is a small screw. That allows us to set the tension right here on the jaws. Let's open that up because we've got a thicker project here and I don't want to crush it. But again, that inset still helping us out. Now on our thread, I can't decide which way to go. With the Ritza, so many possibilities. We could actually bring in another color. Well, black is the way we should go on this, but it's just gonna sink in and disappear. You know what, it's my scabbard. I'm gonna go with that pretty bright white stitch line. It's hand sewn. Let's show that off. So right here, let's call that about 15 inches. And in fact, we don't have to find exactly the middle hole because when we start going in either direction, we'll never see that. But here's an easy way to get close. I've got 13 spots right there. That's our center line. So I'm gonna take out 15 times five, 75 inches of thread. We're gonna go with the John James number 18. It's my favorite sewing needle. Now we use the 16th of an inch drill bit. Chances are we aren't gonna be able to get both needles through here. We can, but it's gonna be a tight fit. So let's do this. Let's go one needle at a time. Actually, it's pretty fast. So our center, there we are, hole number or spot number seven. Let's come through, even out our thread. Good. Now our next hole. If we can't get both needles through, or you don't have good strength in your hands, easy enough. Let's go through with one. Let's pull it back and then take that second needle through. Notice how easy they pass through because we drilled all three plies all at one time. So now let's give that just enough tension to where I can see that stitch sink down in just a little bit. But let's try this. Let's see if we can get both needles through. We can. It's a little bit of a struggle, but we can certainly do that. Well, we've got some stitches in there. That actually looks very good, clean and consistent, good. Now, one thing, don't panic if this happens. I call it the banana effect, but that is not an industry term. When we sew something like a scabbard or a belt, we sew one side, it's gonna bow up just like a banana. It's gonna freak us out. Don't let it, because when we add tension to the other side, it's gonna pull it right back to true. But thus far, this looks good. Now, I think I should have gone a little bit more. So maybe let's go five and a half, maybe even six times our length. Good, now on our last hole, this is where we're gonna have stress if we have any at all. So let's do this. Let's take the one needle, let's come from the back through the front, go back through. Good, now our front thread, let's go back through. So now basically we've just got a double knot right there or a double loop. Tighten that down. Now let's flip this over and let's tie a good square knot right here. We've got room. We've got multiple plies here. If I get my pony to, there we go. We've got multiple plies here. So we've got a number of places we can hide a knot, but I don't want to try to squeeze one in there. So let's do a square knot. Left over right, draw that down. Right over left, draw that down. Good, give that a good tug. Nice. Now let's take our needles and go back through to the front. Pull that good and tight both sides. There we go. That knot's going to sit right there for us. Now on our front, let's take our knife and let's clip this off as close as we can. Very nice. Let's flip this around. We'll start on the center hole and go in the other direction. I've got six times my length now. We're gonna make sure we have enough thread. So all we have to do here, let's start in the same hole where our first stitch originated. Good. Now all we have to do is continue sewing and we have a seamless transition. We came close to running short on our first thread, so now I've absolutely overcompensated. So 
Right here, I don't really feel like I need a double loop on this end. So let's just come from the front to the back. I'm gonna tie my square knot, run back through our holes clip, then I'll do the other side. And we are finally done with the tedious part of sewing, but it looks good. And again, this one's for us. So let's step over to our main table. Let's just add a little extra antique here and we are done. We could always add a couple more steps. We could hammer down our stitch line, which I typically do, but I like that right where it is. Secondly, on our edges, we've got a good meat across here, but we could sand that down. We could slick it, bring it up to a high gloss, but in my experience, the edges of a scabbard, these are gonna get the most wear and tear. But also for a scabbard of this period, let's leave that good and flat. So with our antique, I've got this mixed again, our neutral and our turquoise. With a rag, we're just trying to hit this small edge of our welt. So let's just work the antique into that down and back. Well, that is beautiful. I am so happy with the way that is turning out. So let's reset here. We're gonna see how this fits on our sword and see how this looks on our sword. And my biggest fear at this point, did we glue our insert in? Nope, there we go. That slides out nicely. And now for the big reveal. Let's see how our sword fits. Oh, absolutely perfect. That's beautiful. Now, it may be a little bit tight. We want that because with a little bit of use, it's gonna soften up. It's gonna loosen up just a little bit. That is a beautiful scabbard. Now let's see if this complements the project we spoke about earlier. The perfect complement to a previous project? I think we nailed it on this one. I hope you have a great time making your scabbard and I hope it's spot on beautiful. Good luck with your projects. Mm -hmm.